Hi guys, Stefan here. Today I wanted to show you how to make cheese sauce with nutritional yeast and potatoes, plus a pinch of salt. It's a very, very, very simple recipe. So I'm going to show you part of my kitchen. It's in a bit of a state as we currently speak. Um, the reason being, of course, I've been making some food. So that's the corner that we're going to use. It doesn't look altogether that enticing, as I say. But anyway, so in what's really a huge pot of, um, as you can probably see there, I prepared two potatoes sliced in half, which in a second, I hope the steam doesn't get in the way by the way, uh, we'll take out of that pot and put into the blender. So let's do that now. So here's my blender again. It's not the, the, the neatest or the cleanest in there, as I have been preparing some other stuff tonight, but I'm not really too fussed about cross-contamination for now. So let's quickly transfer the potato, the starch matter, into the blender. I don't want to drop the camera into the uh, pot here. Quite simply, as you can see, oh, once I get my coordination correct, we'll have lift off. That's a fine art of balance. It's really not that simple. Um, with my hands at least. Anyway, here we go. And the last one, the last potato into the blender. So let's have a quick look there. So there's our two sliced potatoes in the blender. So let's now add the nutritional yeast. Now, just a heads up, this is obviously a very, a very good substitute for cheese, um, packed full of B vitamins. So I'm gonna use this baby here, nutritional yeast, once I get my peg off the front. There we go, and once again, I'll open this up with my left hand, oh, let's not drop that either, uh, left hand alone, and we're gonna tip. Now, just to heads up on measurements, I'm not too fussed, I mean, obviously you might wanna do, say, two or three or four tablespoons. I like just to pour, at least in this case. Usually I like to put quite a generous amount if I really want to follow through on that cheesy sort of flavor, that cheesy simulation, if you will. Let's get a little snippet of that. As you can see, quite a generous amount there. And I've got some Himalayan pink salt here as well, which I'll just take a pinch of. Oh, quite literally a pinch going into the mix here. Don't want to have too much at all. And finally some filtered water, which I have indeed pre-prepared, only a little bit in this case, but this is my water filter. You don't really want to use straight tap water. I would definitely recommend using a filter if at all applicable and possible and at hand. So let's pour this into the mix. Once I get my technique in place, and again, not too much. We want to make it quite thick in this case. Um, hence the potatoes, of course. And I'll get the lid. Let's switch that on. Let's make sure it's firm, obviously. That's always a critical component of the process. And there's my blender. Shining up, it's got the neon blue there showing now. So we're gonna hit smoothie. The smoothie setting I tend to find generally delivers uh, most adequately of all the settings. So let's hit that. And lift off, look at that, oh! So obviously it does it in little incremental bursts. It usually takes about 30 to 45 seconds, so not too long at all, if that. And what I tend to do is just pulse it once more as well. For maybe 10 seconds max. And we're off. So now what we're gonna do finally is pour it into a pot, which is not again clean, because I've been using it just now. It's a little bit, looks a bit burnt actually. I don't really wanna show that off, but I'll just give you a glimpse of that. It doesn't look pretty at all. Back to our situation here, the life of the party. Amidst the murkiness. So hopefully you can just about see that. Mix in there. Let's pour our lovely custard-like mix, not in flavor, just in texture and appearance, into the awaiting pot. So hopefully you get a bit of a glimpse into that kind of milky, don't want to drop the camera here, milky liquid, thick liquid that you can see. Let's lift that off and pour it directly into the pot here. Oh. certainly has that very bright yellow custard like semblance doesn't it now let's retreat from the pot somewhat don't worry about cleaning that just yet we'll say that to the end of the night as ever and um, I'm actually cooking a pie in here I'll just give you a little a little glimpse this is a certainly 
a recipe for another day, but this is my uh, quiche cum shepherd's, vegan shepherd's pie with lentils. Um, I don't want to give too much weight on that front just yet. However, go back to our elements and let's navigate down here. So we're using our top left element, of course, you don't need to know this so much, but uh, I just want to make sure I've got my correct settings here. Yep, let's turn that off for now, and we're just going to turn this up maybe for five, ten minutes, not long at all. And if you want, you can obviously put the lid on, let's not for now. One thing just to um, take note of, however, it does tend to bubble up, so we want to avoid that. So in that case, you might certainly want to put the lid on. Here we go. And we'll give that same five, ten minutes. And we'll return shortly to that mix once it starts bubbling up. There's my wooden spoon, of course, as ever. It's going to release some of the, the frost in the, uh, in the way here. Certainly tampering with our navigation, I'm sure, certainly from your perspective. Apologies if that is indeed the case. And already some promising signs, however, here. Let me just move this bad boy. I'm probably going to burn myself. So what we can see here now, we'll just be extra careful. We don't obviously drop this device the camera into the mix, but certainly we can show it off a little bit with zooming in or at least moving the camera towards the mix. And that's going to bubble up shortly. So again, we just want to protect the camera from any instance of the, that happening. But you can see already it's starting to warm up quite nicely and actually thicken that much more in doing so. Let me just retrieve my my wooden wand, if you will, my wooden spoon from the sink. And we'll just give that a, a stir. And as you can see already, it's starting to uh, take shape quite nicely. Of course, you want to stir this mix, by the way, once you see it begin to bubble up and, and warm up. It's usually quite easy to, to notice. You'll certainly see the uh, bubbles forming. And once that is the case, certainly get your get your spoon, your wooden spoon, or any spoon for that matter, but I, I certainly find wooden, a wooden spoon is the best uh, device to use. The best. You don't want it to stick to the bottom or burn indeed to the bottom of the pot, that's quite critical. So make sure you're stirring it consistently, simply like this, and within, well it's really up to you as to when you want to serve the mix, already that's practically there.